Mark Bailey in on this one. He's joining us from Fig Securities. Top of the morning to you. Good to see you, Mark. Good morning. So G20, lots of statements, no broad commitment to any sort of a figure when it comes to global growth. I guess we didn't expect anything much coming from it. How did, how did you read it? Yeah, good morning, Nadine, exactly. I mean, it, again, the G20, uh, lots of talk, lots of hot air, very little action. Um, you know, it's time and time again uh, in terms of, uh, you know, any, you know, definitive formal plans. You know, they talk about the fact that, uh, you know, they can't u continue to use monetary stimulus to try to drive global growth forward and need to use uh, fiscal uh, stimulus as well. But, you know, we've seen uh, in terms of the, the rating actions uh, in the UK and also to a lesser extent in, in Australia that government uh, balance sheets are pretty constrained in terms of what they can do. Uh, and it's all very well talking about uh, trade, but, you know, there's uh, also various talks about, uh, you know, various economies becoming uh, more protectionist in terms of trade agreements as well. So, you know, that global trade and the free movement of goods and services is probably becoming more restricted. And that's in terms of, you know, what the politics around the, the world is becoming as mm. well kind of more shifting towards that right wing uh, that we've seen uh, you know, in the UK and in elsewhere in Europe and you know potentially in the States you know with uh, obviously the si significant success of, of Trump who's uh, secured the Republican nominee and you know who knows could could well be the the next president of the United States as, uh, as dreadful as it is to to think about that possibility but again you know it, it's, it's a very difficult situation that the, the, the governments around the globe they've got the backs against the walls in terms of what they can do what they can stimulate using their own balance sheets and monetary policy as we have seen in most places around the world is kind of reaching its limits of its uh, of, of its uh, efficiency as well in terms of the low interest rates and you know in terms of the the uh, QE that is, is uh, going mm -hmm. on to central banks balance sheets as well so do you think that the G20 should do itself a favor and start making some changes in this you know pr more protectionist environment should the G20 just start, um, I guess, being its own best salesperson and also start pointing out to some examples of this anti-austerity. You know, you can take Canada, for example, in that regard. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of, you know, what they do in terms of the rhetoric, it, it's very difficult to try to agree on certain things. So it's a lot of it's a rehash of the previous um, communique that comes out and there's no real new uh, ideas and, and stimulus because if it, if it was such a great idea it pro probably would have been tried before and it's very difficult to get that uh, agreement amongst those G20 nations when you know everyone has kind of a, a slightly different plan a slightly different idea of how to go forward uh, in terms of you know how you stimulate the economy it's, it's, it's pretty difficult and I think you know I think one of the um, ma major uh, p points of view should be that you're trying to increase infrastructure spend uh, and yes if that does impact your credit rating as a, as a government then so be it but it, it's that productive uh, infrastructure productive government spending that we we would like to see and it's, it's probably going to be mo most beneficial to global trade and global economies gro economic growth is that is a way forward you know you, you talk about the helicopter money and that's been widely speculated in Japan and obviously with the Bank of Japan meeting uh, on Friday, you know, we'll get some idea whether that's going to happen, even though, you know, the, uh, the BOJ gro uh, governor, Kuroda, has said, said, look, it's not going to happen. We don't think that's going to happen. Um, but, you know, the market is certainly expecting additional stimulus, whether that's through additional buying of uh, equities through ETFs, uh, cuts in interest rates or further government bond buying. Um, I th you know, the market is certainly expecting the BOG governor to, to deliver on some extent. And that's going to be a really interesting meeting, a really pivotal uh, way to kind of end the week. And, you know, he has disappointed and surprised the market on a positive side as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, we, it's very difficult to c get a read on him. Yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll be talking about it all week. Now, when it comes to uh, Christine Lagarde, um, chief of the IMF, she obviously at the G20 was talking up trade liberalization being key to bolster productivity and global growth. We heard from the German finance minister in relation to Brexit saying that, uh, you know, it wasn't up to the rest of the world to really cushion the blow of Brexit. What was Lagarde saying on that front? Yeah, I mean, she's just kind of adding again her, her thoughts and views, which is probably pretty widely held in the financial community that, you know, Brexit did lead to and has led to political uncertainty and financial mark vol markets volatility. Um, you know, no real change there. And I think it was interesting, your, your comments earlier in terms of the uh, 
German finance minister saying, look, it's, it's not up to governments to bail out banks. I think that's probably a, a rather kind of, you know, probably slightly veiled comment in terms of what's happening in Italy there, in terms of what uh, is actually going to happen in terms of the, uh, the bailout there, the 40 billion that needs to be injected, whether that will actually come through taxpayer funds prior to any uh, bail-in or bail-out of, uh, of creditors, uh, or whether that will come in uh, after. And if it comes in after, then, um, you know, then that's uh, a new president in terms of how that bail-in will take place. If it comes in before, then obviously that protects a lot of creditors, which is in, in the Italy situation, a lot of retail mom and pop investors would be kind of uh, under the cosh and would actually t take some fairly hefty write down. So I think that's probably a veiled threat in terms of what's mm -hmm. going on in Italy at the moment. And uh, again, that's another kind of touch point to, to watch going forward in the next few weeks. Absolutely. Now, locally, what you, what's across your desk this morning, Mark? I mean, what, what are you really working on? Uh, in, ter in terms of local, um, it's, it's all focused on, uh, on Wednesday CPI. Yeah. Um, you know, 0.4 across the, uh, the headline, the, uh, the trimmed and the weighted. Um, you know, anything significantly below that, and that probably does allow the, the RBA to, to move next month. Anything around targets, you know, it's going to be a line ball call as to whether they move. I think my gut feel is probably we do stay pat uh, in uh, next week's uh, meeting in terms of, you know, whether or not um, they continue to push that uh, slam. It's without a doubt, it's an easing bias, and we'll probably get a move at least one uh, before the end of the year, and maybe one additional one next year. So, kind of round about the one to 1.25 percent for the, uh, the terminal RBA cash rate. I think at the moment is is looking likely, mm -hmm. whether it moves or not uh, at the next meeting. Okay. Mark Bailey, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks indeed. Have a good one. You too. Mark Bailey there from Fig. We'll